Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's Castle Scope. We're back with another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys that you do not need Topaz Labs to make skins, all right? I don't want to hear that I need Topaz Labs to make my art better anymore, all right? Topaz is a really good asset to have, but if you don't have it, it's okay. You're going to be fine. You don't need Topaz Labs to make dope skins on Photoshop, all right? So the first thing I'm going to do is, well, I have my mask just because I wanted to be ready for the video, but what you have to do first is we're gonna just mask out the white sections of his jersey, all right? Cause like I tell you guys all the time, when a jersey looks like it's white, it's really not white because if you really look in here and look at the artifacts, the there's like reds in here and everything. So first thing you wanna do is just really make sure everything is white. So use your pen tool or any selection tool you have and I'm gonna mask this out and we're gonna really turn it to white first just to start things off. All right, so now I got this masked out, and what I'm gonna do is just apply my layer mask first. Um, then I'm gonna hit my layer mask icon right here on the bottom, the rectangle, boom. Hit the white, duplicate this layer, and delete the underneath layer so that we have it there. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. Now, on this white layer, we need to make it white, right? So you say, yeah, it's already white or whatever, but we're just gonna add our channel mixer. So go to your adjustments here, the semicircle, channel mixer, right click create the clipping mask or you can do it with the shortcut option or alt and click down there to make a clipping mask and then we're gonna set it to monochrome you guys see right there it's getting all those artifacts out so now we actually have a white jersey or the white parts of our jersey are actually white all right so now at this point what you're gonna do is just put everything together into a group so group it and then press ctrl j to make a duplicate group and with this duplicate group, it's everything that's inside here. So I'm just going to press, or I'm going to do my right click, convert to smart object. I have a shortcut for smart objects, and you guys should make them as well. But yeah, just convert to smart object there. And now we're ready to go and start experimenting with our, our uh, skin. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to add curves. All right, so go down to my adjustments, boom gonna add curves all right so now with curves a quick background story about curves is that this side is your darks and this side is light and that works for everything on Photoshop pretty much that you're gonna be using adjustment sides left side is gonna be dark sides white right side is gonna be light so if you move this more towards the uh, dark side is gonna be more of the light see this bar right here this gradient bar that's all that really means but what I like to do with my curves is I like to just make hills, just like you see in this thumbnail. I like to make hills because the hills bring out uh, bring out the lights and darknesses. So you can make a lot of variants with these. So what I start by doing is usually bringing the brightness up and then I'll go and, you know, bring it down a little bit and then I bring it back up like there and I'll bring it back down. And now at this point, I'm like, OK. Now I really see what we got going on here. So now I can just go in and fix my points to my likings that I want it to be like. So now you're just playing around on the curves. Like it's simple as that. Like there's no, there's no like specific way to, to do the curves. Like you just have to play around and see what you want to bring out. What do you want to bring out in your, in your subject? What do you want to bring out? Do you want to bring out more highlights? Do you want it to be more dark of a pop? What do you want to do? right so I'm just playing around and then I get to a point and I'm like all right that looks pretty good it's looking pretty dynamic you know right here we have a lot of dynamicism dynamicism I don't know if I said that right but we have a more dynamicism and then we're we can drag this um we can drag this this way or we can drag the, sh the shades this way whatever you may want to do but I think that's really harsh there so something I like to do is go right click into my blending options okay and in blending options I like to use this slider see how that's sliding things right out um, so what I like to do is feather it though so how are you gonna feather it is you click on one of the points so I'm holding down alt while I click or option hold down alt or option while you click and then you can feather these adjustments out whether you want to do it from the lightnesses or from the light or the dark I really am just making up words out here so if you want whether you want to do it from lights or darks does not matter blend if it's always on gray usually for me and then that's gonna be good for my first layer okay so right away you're already seeing a lot more um, 
a lot more just variance in my in my tones so I'm gonna clip that layer as well clip it so right click create clipping mask or you can do a shortcut so now I'm gonna add levels all right levels is the same thing darks lights but I like to use this bar in here because it just lets me see a lot more things and with this bar I usually just move this from the further beginning and then I just play around once again to see where I want everything to be at so with my darks I'm moving them moving the middle bar just gives you more of a gradient so this is like I said again up to you where you want to place everything and you can also check back onto your background and what you had before that so you can already see we're making a lot of changes so then I'm going to my blend options again and I'm going to feather some things out and feather some in just like that okay so that's two ways or that's two uh, adjustments we've already made very quickly okay so what I also like to do is I also like to add vibrance so go to your adjustments put vibrance on clip it and my vibrance I usually put this up all the way I mean that's just my my type of style that I like to use I put this up all the way and uh, usually and you guys see just adds to the tone then I always I literally always use blending options and I can see right here it's doing a, a, a favor for this right there okay I usually always add blending options and then you can don't be afraid to bring your opacities down too if you feel like it's too much of one thing bring your fill slash opacities down and that can help you as well all right so now I'm gonna add a color look up okay so now we're getting somewhere see this is the beginning and this is where we're at now so now we're definitely getting somewhere I don't like the vibrance on the mask so I'm just gonna paint on my mask on my face mask take that vibrance off of there right I don't really like it there so that's fine now we're gonna add a color look up so go to your adjustments go to color look up if you don't have these color lookups, I will link the video where you can get the link to those, or I'll just put the link in the description, either one. But um, what I like to use is 88. I just kind of know some of the ones I really like to use. So I'm, we're going to use 88 here. And now this 88 is clipped to him. Now you're like, okay, well, geez, this is very, very, very uh, overwhelming. So we'll go to blending options, and we're going to blend some out. Simple as that, guys just like that okay now I'll drop my fill a little bit and boom there we go now we have our skin really going for us and everything's starting to come together um, so now when you guys see topaz lab there's usually a good amount of sharpening so I'm gonna show you guys how to just use sharpen to your advantage as well so go to filter sharpen and go to smart sharpen alright so once you're in smart sharpen you can see a preview with these little two arrows. You can zoom in or zoom out to your preview, whatever you want to do. So I usually add a good amount of sharpening. I'm not going to lie. Um, I just feel like it just gives it more of that skin type of vibe that we want to go for. Drop my radius down pretty low usually. And um, yeah, remove lens blur. I don't use this part really. So I guess we'll just set it to lens blur and then for shadows you can also adjust these to your liking it's just putting on a selected color now this kind of just brings the piece together for me usually and I go right underneath or right above my mask layer when I do this so go on your mask layer then go to your adjustments go to selective color all right now selective color you can literally pick from reds yellows greens, cyans everything just like neutrals works really well too but these are the specifics, the reds, all these besides neutrals are all the specifics, okay? So I'm gonna start on the reds because I see orange, so orange is really close to red. And now with this uh, adjustment, you can pretty much play around and see what you wanna bring out and what you don't, right? So like black is really gonna help you when you're using these because you guys see right away, that's adding way more tone to this subject right here. And then you can just experiment 
and do kind of just whatever you want if you want to invert the mask and you only want it to be really red over here or really really darker over here and all that type of stuff you can invert the mask and paint on with white white reveals black hides just remember those things so yeah it's really up to you what you want to do with this in general you see now I'll go to my instead of reds I'm gonna go in my blacks and um, also adjust these to my liking so you know just mixing it up and doing whatever you really feel like is the best for you on your on the skin and then if you wanted to get fancy and go to a light source and just really uh, emphasize your light source go to exposure clip the exposure drag it up right click blending options drag from the the light the lightest side we're gonna hold down all our option again slide this just like that and this way a little bit too just so we get a mix invert the mask and um, either carefully paint or or not it's up to you but you can pick your light source and this is gonna also bring out some points on your uh, mask okay guys so at this point now we have done all of our adjustments that we wanted to do you can go back tweak things as you would like but yeah we're pretty much at the point we want to be at so I made a smart object from the group that I was in and just once again to make a group you hold click from the top go to the bottom and then you press Control G that would make a group but we don't need to do that and then from the group you can make a duplicate Control J okay and then you would right click and create a smart object but if you guys don't have a, a sh shortcut for a smart object i would do that um to do that you go to window workspace keyboard shortcuts and menus and then you can literally pick shortcuts for pretty much anything all right pretty much anything that you want to do in photoshop all right so that's cool so at this point now i have this into a smart object and now we can really go crazy and finish it up with camera raw filter all right so what you're gonna do here is press Control J on that smart object you made from your group and I'll just name it bangles player well it's Tony Brown but you know whatever so then we're gonna go to filter and then camera raw all right right here filter camera raw filter now in camera raw filter we're just gonna go through and see what we want to use and what we don't so I'm gonna start at basic and I'm gonna just play around a little bit with everything not much with all the temperatures and everything like that but contrast contrast gonna bring out like the the vibe kind of like a vibrance was not nah, I don't know how to exactly explain it but contrast does do a good amount for your colors so if you want it to be like super skin like you can go more or just kind of chill you can set it back or not even use it it's up to you texture it's gonna give you more texture just bring out the texture from your subject so a lot of times when you see topaz that's a lot a lot of texture so bring that up clarity definitely topaz labs has a lot of clarity and dehaze um, I mean you can use dehaze if you want but I usually don't even use it so I'm just gonna keep that at zero okay and then the other thing that I would use is curves right so use curves and we can make those hills again and just bring out some colors and hide some colors whatever you want to do bring out curves again and this is gonna help you a good amount for making a lot of detail like a topaz skin then sharpening you can add that manually whatever you want to do whatever you feel is good I don't use noise reduction or color reduction really um, and yeah if I'm making a skin I'm not gonna really use color mixer much color grading optics geometry not too much of anything of this if you want to add grain go for it but you don't really see that much color grading I would do this more when I'm done with my composition and I'm just matching the colors but you could you could do it if you want start off by that if you want to but I don't really use that calibration don't really use these either so really all I used was the curves from here like that and I used my details sharpened and also just a little bit of my clarity and texture Okay, so now I'm just gonna press OK. Um, like I said, this is up to you what you want to use, but I'm just giving you guys the avenue to experiment on. So press OK, and now we have a fully skinned player, right? So that's after, this is before. 
after before so that is going to do it for the video today i hope you guys enjoyed um just gave you guys a bunch of options and you really i show you guys you really don't need topaz labs to do this if you just remember the settings that you have or just settings in general base basic things that you like to do this will become a very quick process for you when you're designing so it can be very helpful and if you don't have topaz labs here's the video for you so share this with anybody that needs help to make some custom skins or they're they're kind of just shy to make skins because they don't think they're going to come out well they will just trust in your adjustment layers and trust in your color corrections all right guys so with that being said that's going to do it for the video it's been council scope stay scope guys make sure you guys hit that sub button hit that like button and let me know what you want to see from the channel and i'm out peace Thank you.